If I asked you to describe how PSG striker Kylian Mbappé celebrates most of his goals, you tell me that he folds his arms in front of his chest while his hands disappear under his armpits. So joy over a goal always looks the same on Kylian Mbappé. Most players have their own expressions. This is how joy looks on Serge Gnabry. This is how it looks on Harry Kane. This is how it looks on Sam Kerr and who doesn't know this guy's version? If you take away celebrations in football, you take large parts of footballers' identities with them. And the joy. But is it really just about joy? Goal celebrations used to be of little interest in the old days. People didn't come to see them at all. They were frequently cut off. And when a celebration was caught on camera, it often looked like this, reserved. And if it wasn't, then it was still short and the players got on with the game quickly. The purpose of football was to score and therefore it was then to return to the middle of the pitch and then start the game and score again. It wasn't to go and stand in front of a, a camera and celebrate a particular style of celebration. It wouldn't have made sense to do that. Today, you don't even get the chance to look away. They don't just show the celebration, they show it many times over. Again, and again, and again, and in slow-mo. And this is just an ordinary Bundesliga game. Do you ever ask yourself, what happened between here and there? Maybe it helps to ask, why do footballers celebrate at all? Whether you're playing at the beach or at the World Cup, well, that's easy. Joy, an immense feeling of happiness, orgasmic. But look at these guys. Didn't look too orgasmic last century. They were very conservative. They were very masculine. You know, there was no real emotion. Goal scoring in the 50s and um, early 1960s was a reaction. It was something people were doing as they had scored. They were... It wasn't a dramatic reaction, it was an understated reaction. This joy is pure reflex, and reflexes cannot be influenced. But cheering like this is not a reflex. Or like this, this, or this. Imagine this back in 1960. Any idea how supporters then would have reacted to a Ronaldo sue? Probably with disdain. <laughs> you know, what the hell are you doing? Um, you know, this doesn't make it doesn't make any sense. A yoga session on the pitch would have made everyone, even your teammates, very suspicious. Why? Because before the age of self-discovery, it was all about the group. It wasn't individuality that was chic, but rather being in sync. If you think about a Ford factory in the 1940s and the 1950s, you know, a Ford factory is He's, he's sort of premised upon this large-scale method of production. You know, it's a standardised product. It's a car being produced for mass consumption. And I think the celebrations themselves in the games were quite reflective of that. Back then, a player would never see his name on a jersey. And he'd never, ever think of celebrating by himself like this. What happened? Well, it's one for the money. This happened. Television, rock and roll and cult of personality rattled the out of conformity. People become individuals and athletes became bigger than their sports. I am the greatest. Footballers too were singled out as stars, almost detached from their team. The attention made them self-aware. This is so that I'm grunde genommen schon von frühester Zeit individualist war, allerdings nicht so ausgeprägter wie es im Augenblick ist. The individual stood out from the team and the most individual moment was when he scored a goal. People are watching it. People get people get to see these goals, 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 goals scored. And therefore the players recognize that. They recognize that there's an audience. There's an audience to perform for. Players were recognized from their celebrations. And the more outlandishly they celebrated, the more famous they became. Would Roger Mila have become an international star if he hadn't danced with the corner flag after each goal? Then in the 90s, goal celebration became... Very reflexive, very self-reflexive, very... They become to a, like a post-action. 
You know, they're, they're, they're not necessarily produced by the event. Suddenly, goal celebrations had purposes. The reaction became an action. Players used them as a means of communication. Examples? Jürgen Klinsmann started to take the mickey out of people naming him a diver by diving after each goal. Robbie Fowler reacted to rumors of alleged drug use by pretending to snore at the goal line. And this is how Peter Crouch silenced his critics. And who says he's robotic? And that can be quite an empowering thing, I think, for an, in for an individual to, to respond to the, the critics. We shouldn't understate it. Goal scorers have, ho have, have always had the space in which to communicate. Communicate important political messages, communicate important personal messages, com communicate important collective messages on part of the team. Goal celebrations came to serve so many different purposes, and not all of them were good. Celebrations changed forever. Even on football's most popular video game, FIFA, 1993 was the last year you would see the conventional cheer of joy. After that, the summer sold, the slide, the plane, the point. The game was reflecting reality and reality reflected the video game. The celebration became part of the modern pop culture. How could all these young footballers growing up watching this ever think that not going crazy was an option after a goal? Gareth Bale, who played for Tottenham Hotspur and then Real Madrid, at one point was actually trying to get the intellectual property rights for his own celebration. And that, and that shows you how individual we become, right? Today, the sports pages are filled with talk about footballers celebrating. Players have to explain why they do what they do. Like when my colleague Kress asked Serge Gnabry where he got his cooking gesture. And I was just having a conversation before the, before the game with my friend and he was like, oh, you need to score and when you score. I think maybe James Harden around that time had, had been doing that. Right. And he was like, yo, that was so fire, you got to do that when you score. <laughs> and I hope there's no more questions about this now. <laughs> Sometimes you start to wonder which is more important these days, the goal or the hoo-ha afterwards. Let's have a look at Mo Salah post-goal, for example. Purpose 1. Salah reminds us he's the dude who scored. Purpose 2. He connects with the team who are all asked by the manager to embrace after goals. Purpose 3. He connects with the fans. And then Purpose 4. With God. And Salah doesn't even have a signature celebration. Something which has become indispensable for many players today. Why is that? Individual players recognize now that they are brands. They have sponsorship deals. So they have to celebrate in a way which connects the audience with who they are. And a successful product is not only talked about, it's also copied, even outside the world of soccer. Like at the Australian Open in 2022. They were doing some Ronaldo thing, like Ronaldo does it every time he scores. It's more than just a goal celebration. It's Ronaldo celebrating such a predictable, inauthentic, way and that is not something we should just accept because young young kids are copying these celebrations and when you've got kids who are playing for that and not for the love of actually playing football and scoring and getting something from it kids don't just want to play like ronaldo they want to celebrate like him and become the living meme he is a parody of a parody of a parody Social media fuels this development. Everyone's been trying to do this. Delhi Alley celebration not only went viral, it sparked a challenge and countless discussions. Does anyone else remember the goal he did this after? Boy, what a change from here to here. Footballers have changed since then. And someone else has changed. These people have turned into you. You have changed, haven't you? Tell me which celebration you particularly like. <laughs>